Is it a butterfly or a moth? Actually, this is a moth butterfly. No, I'm not joking. Not many people know that these creatures even exist in the first place. A moth butterfly. Officially what you're looking at is an insect from the family Hadelidae. And officially these nocturnal Lepidopterans are classified as butterflies. That's right ladies and gentlemen, this is a nocturnal butterfly. But what's even more interesting is that this butterfly has evolutionary traits that are more similar to moths than butterflies. So what is it exactly? Is this the missing link between butterflies and moths? What are we looking at? Let me tell you about them today, because there is a lot of confusion I would like to clear up. These crazy insects have traits of butterflies and moths, and in the past scientists classified them as moths. But in 2011 scientists decided that as a result of molecular analysis, the moth family Hadelidae had more in common with the traditional butterfly families than with other moths. So despite being classified as moths in the past, since recently they have been reclassified as butterflies. How is that even possible? Let me explain to you after we start the intro to my Brazilian nature vlog series. This is a macrosoma and worldwide there are about 35 species of macrosoma. These belong to a family of butterflies known as the Hadelidae, a butterfly family that a lot of people don't even know exists in the first place. That is why I am on YouTube to educate you about them. The Hadelidae are also known as the moth butterflies and they have puzzled scientists for ages because they have a combination of traits that are typical of butterflies and typical for moths. That makes it harder to classify them. For a long time scientists have argued about these insects and whether or not they should be classified as butterflies or as moths. So let's see and examine what kind of traits they have in common with butterflies or with moths. First of all, the insects are nocturnal. They fly in the middle of the night. This is a trait they share with moths, so that is one point for Team Moth. The fact they are nocturnal is fascinating to me. Not many people even know that nocturnal butterflies exist. Most of us know butterflies as day-flying creatures that are diurnal and visit flowers in summer. The fact that there is a whole family of butterflies that fly at night that very few people ever talk about is just fascinating to me. The early stages however have many butterfly-like characteristics. The eggs for example are structurally close to those of butterflies rather than too close to moths. The caterpillars have horn-like processes like some emperor butterflies do and have what is called a bifid tail as found in many ringlet butterflies and their relatives and secondary tufts of hair as found in white and sulfur butterflies. They also have what is called an anal comb used for expelling droppings, a characteristic of the skipper butterflies. The pupa likewise have structural characteristics that are more representative of butterfly pupa and are secured to the substrate with a silken girdle just like those of whites, sulfurs and swallowtail butterflies. So their larvae and pupa are butterfly-like and their early stages resemble those of butterflies. That is one point for Team Butterflies. Unlike butterflies, however, the Hadelidae have unclubbed and feathered antenna. If you can look closely, you can see they have slightly feathered antennae. This is a trait that they have in common with species of moths. That's right, one point for Team Moths! <laughs> 
And when scientists dissected the insects, they found that after examination of the legs, wing fangs, internal organs and genitalia of butterfly moths, they found even more evidence of their affinity to butterflies. So their organs and genitals are similar to butterflies. That's one more point for Team Butterflies. They also have a hook that links the forewing and the hindwing together. This is a wing coupling system known as a frenulum. This is a physical trait only found in moths and not in butterflies before. One more point for Gryffindor. I mean, uh, one point for Team Moths. I could go on and on, however, but I have to be honest with you. In reality, there are dozens of morphological traits that they have in common with moths and with butterflies. So guess what? In some way they both win. It's impossible to go into all the details right now because there are just too many and it's too confusing. Last but not least, the conclusion I draw from this is that perhaps looking at the morphology alone is not sufficient to answer the question if they are butterflies or moths alone. Perhaps we need to look deeper and involve genetics. And that's exactly what scientists have done. And now I'm about to become a little bit technical here, and I apologize for that. First, I will explain it in a complicated way, but later I will simplify it for you. But all butterflies and moths belong to the order of Lepidoptera. This order of insects is split into 34 superfamilies, and each of these superfamilies have their own particular characteristics. In the order of Lepidoptera, what we classify as moths vastly outnumbers what we classify as butterflies. And 95% of all species in these superfamilies are what we refer to as moths. So where are the butterflies in this system? Traditionally, in systematic terms, what we define as butterflies is the superfamily of Papilinoidea, which comprises of six families. Five of these the Papilionidae, or the Swallowtails, the Lycaenidae, or the Small Blues, the Riodinidae, or the Metal Marks, the Pyridae, or the Whites and Sulfurs, and the Imphalidae, or Brush-Footed Butterflies, have always been regarded as butterflies. Positioned, in evolutionary and systematic terms, somewhere in the middle of all these moths and butterflies are two particular superfamilies, the Hesperioidea and the Papilinoidea. The Hesperioidea comprises of a single family I did not mention yet, the Hesperidae, or skippers. And these are generally thought of as being butterflies. In 2011, however, scientists decided that as a result of molecular analysis, is that the moth family Hedilidae seemed to have more in common with the traditional butterfly families than with other moths. Consequently, the Hedilidae were transferred to the Papilinoidea and now they are regarded as butterflies. So in terms of systematics, the Papilinoidea are positioned between the moth superfamilies Geometridae and Trepanidoidea. Wow, that was a lot of information. But to explain it simply to you, genetic research has determined they have more in common with the taxonomical group that we call butterflies than the taxonomical group we call moths and they were transferred to the Papilinoidea superfamily that includes all butterflies. So since 2011, this officially makes them butterflies. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is right now classified as a butterfly. Okay, 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 I admit it, I admit it, people. In the beginning of this video with the introduction and the title, I may have clickbaited you a little, which will inevitably result in a lot of comments that sound like, actually, Bart, let me explain to you how it really works. Scientists currently do not doubt the fact that these insects are indeed classified as butterflies. 
In fact, right now, since a recent taxonomic change, these Macrosoma butterflies have been included into the superfamily that includes all the other butterflies. So there is no debate anymore if this is a butterfly or not. Right now, these are classified as fully fledged butterflies. So I guess that some of the debate, or me saying in the beginning that they may or may not be butterflies or moth, or half butterflies or moth, is not true. This is quite simply a butterfly. Truly, compared to all the other butterfly species in the world, this very small family of butterflies is indeed totally unique and also ignored. Very few people talk about these butterflies or even mention them, which is very interesting and a little bit sad because these animals deserve attention too. Infinite points to Gryffindor! Team Butterfly wins! And that is why they are nowadays classified as butterflies. At least science relies less on a deus ex machina than J.K. Rowling's writings. Hey, no hate here. She writes good books for children and young adults. It's not her fault 30 year olds still decide to read them. Wait, did I pronounce that right? Deus ex machina. Wow, that sounds very sexy. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I love to introduce you to the butterfly moths or the moth butterflies, which right now are nocturnal butterflies with moth-like traits. Very interesting, very unique. In the past, their status has changed back and forth from butterfly to moth and butterfly to moth and moth to butterfly. But maybe, now based on genetic evidence, finally, their status has consolidated as a butterfly. For now. Thank you guys for watching and I'm happy to introduce you to the forgotten family, the forgotten butterfly family of the Hey Dilly Day. Thanks for watching. This was Bart Coppens with a nocturnal butterfly. Bye bye. And this, ladies and gentlemen, this is why you want Bart Coppens to go to tropical countries like Brazil. So I can tell you about butterflies that you've never heard of in your life. I bet most of the people watching this channel have never heard of this group of butterflies. Even the people who are a big fan of butterflies have probably not heard about these weirdos. They are the forgotten butterflies and I'm here to tell people about them. And if you want me to travel more, you can help. You see, YouTube has completely demonetized my YouTube channel. When I upload a video on YouTube, I don't make any money from it. YouTube is not supporting my show and they even refuse to say why I am demonetized. This makes it very difficult for me to continue making videos. You see, I am a YouTuber that travels the world to film interesting, rare and unusual butterflies, moths and other insects for you. However, traveling the world is not cheap. It's expensive and time consuming. And the only reason I'm able to do it is because my fans generously support my channel by tipping and donating if they like the show. Of course, this message is only for those who are willing and able. Help yourself before you help others and certainly a random YouTuber. If you see value in my content, in what I do, however, if you enjoy the show and if you want me to keep going, consider tipping or donating. It's the only thing that makes videos like this possible. Donating is possible via Patreon, PayPal, LiberaPay and any other options. I would truly appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. Last but not least, I study butterflies, in, um, butterflies and moths in the country of Brazil, in particular the Atlantic rainforest in southeast Brazil. I did it in collaboration with a natural reserve named Regua. You can visit Regua too, we even accept tourists. If you are curious about the place where I work, visit the Regua website, it has cool information. Hope to see you there too someday. Bye bye!